For the last item on the agenda, where we will be receiving Stefan Bortsmeyer, very well known by everyone who knows AFNIC, the .fr registry, as well as other extensions since the start of the of ICANN's new extension program, Stefan. We are pleased to welcome him. Let us point out that AFNIC is a technical service provider for the new GTLD, so very much linked to the Provence project and to its development. Precisely, regarding Dot Provence, Dot Frogans, that's what we'll be speaking about in detail, to understand Jean Manuel, the needs that led us to use this Dot Frogans. Une infrastructure sécurisée autour de cette extension to develop a secure architecture around this extension. Thank you, Stefan. That Fragrance is just the tip of the iceberg. Below Fragrance technology and site resolution, there's something massive, technical. There's a technology bringing together a lot of players, a lot of profiles, engineers, experts at communicating. I'm talking about the DNS, Domain Name System. Without this technical brick, supporting the overall Fragrance technology, the resolution of Fragrance site would not be possible as it's imagined today. To speak about it, this technological brick with DNS. Thank you, Stefan, for accepting to take up our invitation. Can you introduce yourselves in just a few words for, to those who don't know you? When I work at AFNIC Labs, the Research and Development Center at AFNIC, AFNIC, as we said, is the domain name register for .fr and the technical operator for .forgan. At AFNIC, the AFNIC Labs is in charge of uh, the medium and long term activities, not operations, all the rest. And I am more specialized on a technological watch, technical normalization, security, data, private data confidentiality, legal and technical supervision, keeping me very busy, because if there's still a lot of things happening every day in the world of DNS. You never get bored. Yes, thank you, Stefan. And you're the first member of AFNIC to take part at this uh, conference on Forgans technology. At the first edition, we had Mathieu Vey, Deputy General Manager, who came. No, the Director General, I'm sorry, who came to speak. That's a rapid promotion there. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I was really thinking of what I would be saying later on to speak about delegation of that four grants, which is quite recent at the time, and administered by AFNIC. And at the previous conference, we had Mr. Pierre Bonis, who is the Deputy Director General, who spoke about internet governance and a certain number of questions raised at ICANN, at international governance forums, the most emblematic being, of course, the re-delegation of the internet route, which is now abandoned by the American government. No, I'm sorry. By the trade department to be moved on to a model that will be managed by internet users. Maybe I can. I'm so sorry for this going off the, the track, Stefan, but you're here to talk about DNS. In Forgans technology, you have that Forgans, of course. 
It is thanks to that Furgans that we can ensure the resolution of Furgans addresses via resolution service for Furgans sites. I won't go into the details on that. But DNS is there at another level, as Philip said earlier, hosting Furgans sites. And this is where we get out of the world of control of OP3FT because Furgan sites can be hosted on conventional servers. And of course, you will find DNS resolution for web Furgan site resolution. So find out what's happening at the level of DNS is extremely important for the Furgan's project. AFNIC also lends us its expertise through you, Stefan, and I thank you. After this lengthy introduction, I'm so sorry, could you tell us briefly what are the basic principles underlying DNS for those who have never been confronted with these pretty much technical concepts. Several ways of presenting a DNS. The simplest thing is to think of using how it's used. It's a database where you can find information from names. We all know the names, the famous domain names that you see everywhere on buses, on business cards. When you make a query, you can obtain useful information. The best known being IP addresses are for use for server connection, but you can also obtain the name of the instant messaging relay. You may obtain cryptographic keys to start a secure discussion with someone. Lots of possibilities. DNS is presented as a way of associating a name with an IP address. It's a poor vision of a DNS. It's much more rich than that, much more general. The internet is packed with uh, successful technologies be beyond their designers' hopes. That too applies to DNS and will be used, therefore, for lots of things that were not expected at the outset. At AFNICA, speaking with Paul, the inventor of the DNS, who came by to say hello, I asked him if he had planned all the uses that I made of DNS today. He said, when you invent a technology, if you can if you can foresee what it will be used for, it means that the technology was not interesting. So the DNS is for an association between name and information. For that, it is based on a tree structure. That's the origin of many disputes and governance problems. This name starts at the root. The root is something unavoidable. And then you move on to the first level domain, FR, Frogans, Pizza, and all the rest. Then the second level, and so on, as much as you need to get to the full name. When it's written in Latin character, the root is to the far right. The first level domain is the first that appears to the right. And you can have any number of levels afterwards. For it to work, you need people to manage the servers corresponding to each level of that tree structure. So people are there to manage the root server, leading to a lot of operational and political discussions. Some manage .fr, AFNIC, Forgans2, AFNIC, not quite the same server. And then if you want to have on Aster.fr, for example, you need someone to manage the Aster.fr server with machines answering queries. These machines are confronted with security problems. Very often when I tell people what we do at AFNIC, they say it sounds much very simple. You don't need many people. Of course, when everything's OK, DNS works on its own, and we can save with less people. But there are often problems on the internet because of breakdowns or because of deliberate attacks. So a lot of things are happening at the level of DNS. Can you explain to us briefly how DNS will evolve? And what are the weak points? 
that could jeopardize the security of things built on top of the DNS. Well, if we could, filling in the gaps, are we doing so properly? Well, the new developments in all directions. You have the NPF, an Internet Normalization Institute. The working group in charge of that currently has adopted a document that will become a standard, and there are some 16, 15 or 16 documents on new technologies to be included in DNSs, maybe new data types like PGP keys for electronic mail and ciphering, maybe technical improvements to better deal with problems linked to the increase in the number of attacks, use of TCP, for example, for DNS. The other problems that have been completed, contrary to what I've heard, Unicode the domain names that has been uh, second years ago, if people don't deploy, that's a different story. But for example, for the recent promotional campaign for adult FR names, AFNIC used only uh, names with accents. No one realized it, which is the best sign of the fact that the technique or the technology is mature and it's working well and there's no excuse not to use it. We didn't communicate on the fact that we put accents. No one realized it, showing that it works seamlessly. Amongst the problems or attacks you find on DNS, the two that I could speak about in particular. There is one as a topical event. I don't know who read an article in a French newspaper called Le Monde devoted to a program on Corbel. Well, I guess you are busy looking at Forgan sites. So in that newspaper, they published some of Snowden's documents. And so far, his documents, none of his documents mention DNSs. Saturday, they uh, published an article on a geek uh, cult where people can say, we have a problem. And they'll say, we need more cobbles so it can be used for massive spine of programs using DNS. We knew that there were many weak points in uh, DNS because it worked in other places than we were expected. If Mr. Mish so-and-so connects to his bank server in France, he may feel th that all the traffic will be in France. In fact, if his bank has a dot com, the DNS query will be sent to the U.S. will be easier to capture it. We have known this problem for years, and AFNIC has been producing several documents on describing the problem. You can't solve a problem without a precise description. And we have minimized the data sent to the TLD route. If they have less information, they can't pass it on as much. There will be less problems with data confidentiality. There are other problems with uh, security, and this uh, burning issue once again as a denial of service attacks. Not only have a normal breakdowns of networks, but deliberate attacks made by people trying to shut up this or that organization or country that may have, they have a problem in France, don't want to destroy everything linked to France. These are increasingly sophisticated attacks. Not just school kids playing in their garages, that was true 20 years ago, but we're talking about professional groups or states, and that calls for more and more significant efforts to be ready to deal with attacks that are 10, 20, 100 times greater than the normal traffic on a server. I don't want to scare people at Forgans, but this type of problem is happening with any technology. At first, the technology is brand new. You see the benefits. And when it's an unexpected success, if it's used much more broadly than expected, then you discover problems and weaknesses. And this is why things evolve constantly. This is why we're still working on DNS today, even though it was invented 30 years ago, over 30 years ago. But we're still working on it, because when a technology is really very much used, you find new problems or 
hackers find new weak points. So we can wish that we'll be so successful that we'll discover problems we hadn't even thought of. Yeah, a lot of R&D work ahead of us. Good news, I hope, anyway. Well, I think we can rely on AFNIC to help us by sharing their experience. We spoke a lot about DNS, but I know that you're currently working on alternatives maybe for DNS, because DNS, as you said, is not perfect. It works, but it's not perfect. It may be time to wonder about the fact that some outsiders may be there and not have something against DNS, but may offer other solutions. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Well, first of all, I've been working on this. My activity is just technological watch, to look at what's happening, to foresee, be forward-looking. I'm not developing this technology. I'm very much busy with DNS, but I'm keeping an eye on these new techniques because nothing is eternal. All technologies will be placed one day. Before speaking about these new technologies, let me say a few words, more broadly speaking, about distribution, inventions in a modern society. People with a new idea for new technology always underestimate with their enthusiasm the difficulty of deployment. The internet and DNS in particular, these are huge investments in, in equipment, software, expertise, training, distributed in many places. To replace the DNS by something else, we'd have to redo what we've been doing with DNS for 30 years. All the training, lectures, documentation, all of that. This is something that can't be done in a day. It can only be done if the old technology has unbearable drawbacks or because the new one is so wonderful that it just takes over. But these are processes you don't see every day. So disruptive changes such as the internet itself, we don't have that many in a human person's life. In most cases, you manage what is done before you, and that costs so much that they cannot be just wiped away by the stroke of a hand. So a comparison between the technology used today and what is promoted by some fans is always unfair because the new technology, you only see what's new and wonderful, but the old technology has to be deal with boring operational problems so we can see the drawbacks. Now, I don't want to upset those who carry out research. It's useful to explore new paths, new technologies. Even if they're not deployed, they can give us interesting ideas. And anyway, it's difficult to foresee the future. So you must keep your minds and your ears open. So there are several technologies that, on the one hand, could replace DNS for as a, a network database giving information in exchange for a name. You should know that there are a lot of inventors who, who uh, do things in the back of an envelope. You get together in a pizzeria, you have a few ideas. After two or three glasses, you have more ideas. You write it in the back of an envelope. And the next day, when you try to carry out what you did on the back of the envelope, you get lost. It's far more complex. There are far more problems. So many projects that you have stayed remained in the state of something very general. And you talk about three projects that could be described as being serious. They have really been implemented with a serious technical base. The GNU net is more general than just replacing DNS. It's about replacing a new network infrastructure putting the emphasis on data, conf data confidentiality and extreme deconcentralization, de peer-to-peer, no bosses, no particular points on that. So DNS is centralized, but there's one point, the root, which plays a special role. So NewNet would like to build an architecture with nothing like that. So they have a name resolution can be done through data. So that could be a competitor for DNS. This technology is developed in France. Accelerate would like that. And it has not been very much deployed. You can download GNU Net and install it, but apart from people working directly on it, 
I know of no one who uses GNU net. It's a pity because it's certainly, technically speaking, the project that's the most original and the most serious from an academic perspective, based on serious academic work. The other two are a bit better known because they've been deployed a bit more. They have the Nemo coin for a name reservation technique using the same technology as the Bitcoin, a public system with all the names are registered in the public domain. Access that can be accessed by everyone, where everyone can write. So unicity of names, which is important in the name system, is ensured by the fact that everyone writes in the same data structure. So there's no boss or boss, uh, registry or manager. So in terms of the number of names registered, just a handful. How many people actually use it? I have a name coin name for my personal blog, I can't really say how many people use it with a name coin name. Well, it's not very frequent, but it's interesting to have such a technology. It can be very disruptive technology, major breakthroughs, and it's, it can, you can ensure security, not by trust in, a, in the name of an, an organization, but the fact that everything is public. Uh, the other solution that is possible is used by Tor. It's an, for navigating more or less anonymously. You can visit ordinary websites, but without spies on the way knowing that you're visiting the website of alcohol Alcoholics Anonymous, uh, Esther, or Afnic, or Wikipedia, or the like. Tor protects clients in web surfing, but it has something that's less well known, protecting servers. Having servers that have a name, a special TLD, the point onion, and the names in the point onion are resolved by the Tor system and relayed to the server so that the client does not know the server's address name and vice versa. That protects the client's private life with respect to the server and with respect to third parties. So if you have a site that can only be accessed via an onion point. It's difficult to sanction it because it's difficult to know where it is. So the onion points, these are the three that are really used by real users, people. They're not geeks who want to have fun, who want to try out something funny for the weekend to draw up, uh, to write an article on their blog on Sunday evenings, but really serious people who have something concrete to solve. Real bloggers working in dangerous countries in Saudi Arabia, a blogger just received 100 lashes for writing an article that the regime did not like. In a dictature like that, where there are physical risks, based on what you say on the web, to be able to publish in, a, uh, in secret with point onions, that's very useful. You find that. You find that in, in organizations like Reporters Sans Frontières or the Red Cross. So amongst the recommendations, you can have a point onion, a point onion website. So as out of the world of geeks who like technique for technology's sake, he, these are real users who don't care about IT, but they have a problem to solve. Thank you, Stefan. So he spoke about the competitor for DNS. They have catering to other needs, points in common and, and differences. Let me just mention, Forgan's technology is absolutely not a competitor for DNS. It is an application of DNS because it uses it. It's laid on top of it, we can say, with respect to all the technologies that you've been speaking of, it will be important for B3FT. As a matter of fact, so important that it's a part of its statute of the OP3 FT uh, fund that was uh, has been filed. So you need to think about mechanisms so that Frogan's technology as a software layer on top of the DNS to be able to evolve. And who knows, one day it may lie on another technological brick 
in addition, so that the users who continue to surf on Furgan sites, of course, <laughs> but also for Furgan's addresses to remain as they are, so that we don't need to find new identifiers to surf and Furgan sites so the links within the site, slide to slide, can continue to work. So we have been kind of these studies and will continue as internet develops in general. And I wanted to conclude on that, and I was not supposed to go any further, so I'll leave you, please, to ask your questions. Put your questions to Stefan on DNS, AFNIC, or any topics of interest for you. Thank you, Stefan, for your presentation. And sorry for the speed uh, as we are um, behind schedule. I was trying to catch up, you know, but I promise I will answer the questions uh, slowly or at least slower. I can see a hand. Uh, I'm Tom McKenzie. Good evening, um, Stefan Boltzmeyer. Uh, you now know more about the Frovence project. I think you've been familiar with this project for quite a few years already. And today, for the first time, maybe you saw some demos. So I would like to ask you, <coughs> what is your, what are your feelings about this technology? I'm sorry, but. I will be like a coward, you know. I will say, uh, I will answer later because a demo is good. It shows that there's a piece of software, but it doesn't tell you everything that's behind. In particular, for my specialization, the infrastructure in the, I uh, saw so that in your demo, you put the emphasis on graphics. This is an area where I have not much to say, uh, so I could not say anything clever about this. So therefore, l and I've not been able to play, uh, to toy with this uh, technology myself. I mean, IT is all about um, getting your own uh, feeling, you know, playing, tying with these things. So uh, you need to practice and before you can say anything. Thank you for the question. The um, and any very interesting, enlightening, uh, enlightening answer. Any other questions for Stefan? Um, this is your chance in a lifetime. We'll do like three, two, one, and the last price will be. Well, if there aren't any other questions, we'll thank Stefan for coming, joining us tonight.